Have you ever wondered why, even after years of interval drills or recognizing chords by type, you still can't play music by ear? It's not your fault. In fact, according to decades of scientific research, your brain is wired to hear music in a way that most traditional methods completely ignore. Today we're going to break down the science behind ear training, what your brain actually does when it hears music, and how you can use this to unlock real intuitive listening skills. Stay until the end, because I'll share the number one exercise you can start using today to rewire your musical ear. If you're new here, I'm Leonardo, creator of Use Your Ear, a unique ear training method trusted by over 2,500 musicians, rated excellent on Trustpilot, and taught in top universities worldwide. Before diving in, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming videos. Most musicians think their job is to recognize pitches and intervals, but that's not how your brain hears music. What your brain actually hears is context. Every note you listen to is automatically placed into a sort of musical gravitational field, which is the tonality. This gravitational pull is proven by research from scientists like Carol Crumhansel. She discovered the concept of tonal hierarchy. In simple words, every note changes how it feels, depending on its position in the key. So C doesn't always feel like C. It feels different if it's the tonic, the fourth, the sixth, and so on. And guess what? Your brain builds this tonal map automatically, even if you don't want it to. Studies by Butler, Brown, and others confirm this. Your mind constantly creates an internal home note and arranges everything else around it. Let's try this. I'm going to play a melody in C major. How does that last note feel? Probably like home, right? Now I'll play the same melody, but transpose to A major. Did you feel the shift? Now you are feeling A as home. Am I right? That's your brain remapping the tonal center in real time. This remapping is practical proof that your brain automatically arranges notes into this tonal gravitational field, even if you don't want it to, just as those studies confirmed. This is why notes have emotional meaning, and it's also why traditional interval training often fails. If you've spent months or years practicing ear training and still feel lost in real music, the real reason is that you haven't fully understood how to leverage the natural abilities of your brain that I just described. So it's very likely that your practice isn't fully aligned with it. And this might be why. When most musicians start practicing ear training, they focus on interval-based exercises. Interval exercises assume you can isolate two notes and judge the distance between them. But here's the problem. In real music, your brain never hears notes in isolation. Instead, your brain automatically assigns each note a role within the key we are perceiving internally. You can't ask your brain, what's the distance from A to C sharp? It simply won't have an answer to that, and this isn't what great musicians ask themselves when recognizing notes. While it might appear as if musicians hear two or more sounds and instantly recognize the distance between them, that's only because there's an invisible intermediate step that we can't see. The actual process works like this. First comes the sound, then the recognition of that sound's feeling within the key they are perceiving internally. And only then can they determine the interval, scale degree, or other technical aspects. So the only questions you can effectively ask your brain are, how does this note or chord feel within the key I'm perceiving now? Or, where does this note sit in the tonal gravitational field? But this isn't what happens with interval-based exercises. These exercises assume that you should practice without considering the key in the gravitational field at all. In other words, these types of exercises prevent you from asking yourself the right questions. And that's why many musicians who train this way for years see no real improvement. I know that, because I was one of them. So what actually works? What aligns with how our brains naturally hear music? Here's the short answer for now. Scale degree recognition also known as feeling the function of each note. This means learning to hear each note based on how much tension or stability it carries in the key you are perceiving internally. It's like learning the emotional color of each note. This is what we train in the use your ear method, but this isn't the game changer. The real game changer is how we do it. Stay until the end to understand more about that. 
A good exercise to get started with learning the feeling of each scale degree is the drone exercise. We've demonstrated this in other videos on this channel, so I'll briefly mention it here and then link to a full detailed video at the end. This is a simple note recognition exercise, where there is a sustained tonic chord playing in the background and notes are played on top. Your goal is to recognize the scale degree of each note. This tonic drone allows you to establish the correct key internally and also emphasizes the feeling that the notes assume within the key. Let's try this. Listen to how stable the first degree sounds on top of the tonic drone. Now I'm going to play the second degree. Notice how it feels less stable as if it wants to pull back to the tonic. The third degree feels somewhere between the first and second. Not very tense, but not completely stable either. Then we move to the fourth degree. Hear how it's more tense than the third. These are exactly the kinds of feelings you need to pay attention to. They are the key to developing an intuitive ear. And to give you a small taste of what's possible through this and many other exercises in our method, here's one of our students before starting our program. Notice how he struggled to identify even a few notes of a simple melody. A few moments later. Yeah, I hope this was okay for you and I will start with the next ones. He listened over and over, tried using his instrument to help, but it became too frustrating and in the end he gave up. And here's his level now. Notice how he can recognize the notes instantly, even before touching his instrument. Great. Okay. Great. 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 And not only that, recognizing chords which felt impossible just months ago is now easy for him too. Okay. Again, please. Okay. Which chord that was? Fifth. Great. So. Okay. The truth is, paying attention to the musical feelings I've mentioned before is just the very tip of the iceberg. There are specific thinking strategies that can make or break your ear training progress. After working with over 2,500 musicians, we've seen it firsthand. The key difference between those who succeed and those who stay stuck is how they think, the mental steps they take while practicing. If you've ever felt like you're spinning your wheels or not improving despite practicing, it's probably not your fault. You simply haven't been shown how to think. That's exactly what we teach in our free workshop. You'll discover your current ear training level, learn which exercises to do and which to avoid based on that, and get our science-based thinking strategies that will transform your musical ear. It's 100% free and you can click the link in the description to register now. 
If you're not ready to join the workshop just yet, but you want to dive deeper into how to practice the drone exercise properly, check out this next video. It's one of our most popular and people love it.